Uh, hello everyone, my name is Rick Pasek, the Flyfish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying match. Uh, this is going to be part two, take two, of um, my uh, beginner's uh, uh, tying materials, let's say. Uh, the first one was all about tools. This one will be all about uh, materials that you're going to need. And the reason this is part two is because I did the whole damn thing, about 22 minutes long, and uh, there was no sound. <laughs> so gonna do it all again so bear with me um so yeah so what i'm gonna go through today is all the materials i suggest for the beginner keep that in mind throughout the video this is for the beginner this is not um meant to be um for any advanced guys i mean the advanced guys already have all this stuff um this is for the beginner what you need what i suggest you need to start right off the bat i want to say um, don't go out and buy those kits. Don't buy the Superfly kits or the kits at Walmart or the kits at whatever. Don't buy them. They're they're usually got inferior products in them. Usually they have uh, um, uh, inferior tools in them if you're going to buy it like with tools and stuff. But they just it's usually the seconds, thirds, and fourths from the from the production floor that end up in those things. So just just don't buy them. Um, figure out. Four or five patterns you want to tie, three patterns you want to tie, go buy the materials for those patterns. Then figure out two, three, four more patterns, see what you already have from the first three, and pick up what you need for the next ones, okay? Because um, so much of this material is used across the board. Guinea fowl can be used in 20 different, uh, 20, probably 50 different flies. Teal flank can be used in 50 different flies. Dubbing can be used in thousands of different flies. So um, it's just buy what you need. That's what I would highly suggest. Don't don't go out and buy these kits. They're just not, in my opinion, not uh, of the quality that uh, that you'll you'll get frustrated. A lot of the feathers will break and that kind of stuff. So it just Go buy decent quality. You don't have to buy high end. Buy decent quality materials. What I'm going to show you guys, most of the stuff is inexpensive. It's a few expensive things. You can't avoid it because it's just what it is. But it's the way it is. So I'm going to switch over to my other camera. Um, bear with me again I, I, until I get used to the distance of where the focus is set. So I will send it over to here. Oh, no, I won't. I'll go back and turn on my camera. I'll have to get rid of that. Hey, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna just switch over to the other camera, and there we go. Oh, I got some stuff on my shirt. Close for you. Probably some tying fluff. So, let's start with uh, the basics. Okay, number one, number one, number one, thread. Okay. Whoa, there we go. I think I'm gonna try to zoom in much as I can and then I'll bring it about here and try to focus there we go so threads this happens to be a nano silk from uh, Semperfly nano silk uh, GSPs any it's the same type of thing um, these are so I re highly recommend uh, nano silks and GSPs they're super super strong like I mean I can't I there's no way I could break it I would cut my finger before I break it um, and this is like a 12 watt, so it's pretty pretty thin, right? And I use up to an 18 watt in, in the nano silk uh, for everyday use. So um, I recommend uh, getting three colors: black, white, green. Okay, those are the three colors I recommend in nano silk GSPs. Um, another one that's really good, that's really strong, and uh, Tech Stream. Uh, another one is uh, um, UTC Ultra. This just happens to be pink. Um, but I've gone away from all of that stuff. All I ever use now is Semperfly. Yes, I'm a Semperfly Pro Staff, but uh, it's also my favorite. Even if I wasn't Pro Staff, I, that's all I'd use. I just love this stuff. Um, it's It uh, works really well. The only thing is use wax when you're using um, nano silks. Any, any GSPs, it doesn't matter what brand, use wax. They're slippery. Okay. Two, go and pick up a classic waxed of some sort. It's an old style wax thread. This is a Semperfly wax thread. Um, you can pick up, uh, that's a waxed uni, right? So 
just there's so many different companies that have a wax thread pick up some wax thread as well same colors again I would say black green white okay the reason I always say those three is black very common green very common white if you don't have the color paint it white I uh, use it white paint it the color you need like I got a whole drawer of felt pens so if I paint it white and I need it to be brown if I use white thread and it needs to be brown I just paint the head brown right or orange oops, or red or whatever color right so eventually I would suggest you go and get red I would suggest you go and get yellow and tan and blue and all the other colors but to start off black white olive green and probably a red too I would I would go out and get a red in both the nano silk and the classic waxed ready so that's threads enough with that next the next base hooks now I'm gonna be doing a short four minute video on threads I'm gonna do a short four minute five minute video on hooks on each type of feather all that stuff as part of this this beginner series uh, this is more of an overview so I'm not going to go into big details um, but I primarily use hens hooks nowadays um, I also use um, uh, Hannock and I use um, Arex and Partridge all depends on the um, on what I'm tying what fly I'm tying but 95% of my tying goes on with hens products with hens hooks I just really really like these hens hooks I like the way they're I like the shape of them I like the strength of them I they're so friggin sharp it's crazy so that's what I use Mustads are good uh, Tiemco's are good um, uh, fire hole stick I think they're called or fire hole hooks they're 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 decent uh, Arex is really good uh, Hannock is excellent um, what other ones can I think of off the top of my head well that's about it so um, but if you're a beginner and you don't want to spend much money, go look for uh, um, Daiichi, not di not di sorry, not Daiichi, D Daiichi, not Daiiki. Oh, I always get that wrong. Daiiki, garbage. Daiichi, good. Tiemco, good. Mustad, good. Um, and then you get into the great, the hens, the Hannocks, the Partridge, the uh, um, uh, that, th those brands. They're 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 the really good price wise not much difference so but if you're wanting to start off with just practicing and stuff go pick up some cheaper ones like the uh, uh, like the TM Co's and the Mustads practice with them and then once you get good enough that you're happy uh, that you would use them for fishing then go out and pick up the better ones okay next let's go on to dubbing big 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 um, selection uh, you can get stuff that's sparkly. You can get stuff that's natural. You can get stuff that floats. You can get stuff that doesn't float. You can get stuff that's mixed. You can uh, tons of different ones. So again, go with the recipe, whatever it says in your recipe, go out and buy it. A lot of this stuff can be done with natural products. Um, as an example, if you're doing a hair's ear uh, nymph, use hair's mask. It's uh, the mask is the face of the of a rabbit. So it's the face and the ears, and it tells you right in there, hair's ear. You pick off the, pick the hairs off the ear portion, and then you dub that onto your thread. Again, I'll do a short video on dubbing as well, uh, talking about the different dubbings a bit more intensely, and how to use each one and how to, how to apply it, okay? But just so you guys get a rough idea, you can get them in packages like this. Oops. Right, you can get them in packages like that. Or you can buy them in boxes like this. Uh, I'm going to zoom out again because now I'm showing bigger stuff. So you can get them in boxes like this. This happens to be a Czech nymph one. I'm going to turn that over so you guys can actually read it. Right? And it comes, and you can get these in, in a myriad of, of different styles, like different, like Sparkle and, and Antron and all kinds of naturals and stuff in boxes. Um, you can buy it, like I said, in packages, or a lot of companies are now doing this, which is these are little uh, plastic uh, with each little separate con uh, component container. Each one of these, each one of these holds two of these. So you're getting, in most cases, I think there's 12. So you're getting 24 packs of dubbing in one of these for anywhere between 20 and $30. 
um, and you can get a really good selection of colors. And like this here is a, a Spectra dubbing um, from Hens. This one is a Hairs Plus dubbing from Hens. So it's got hair mask. So this is rabbit face um, with sparkle in it. Um, then you can get, like this is a hard dubbing. It's a mix of rabbit, squirrel, something else. I can't remember. Um, then you can go with Zemperfly. They've got this Capoc, which is awesome stuff. This used to be in your uh, life jackets when you were younger. Remember those red life jackets? That's what's uh, in the in, inside of them. Stuff floats forever and a day. You can get a bunch of different colors in that. This is just a, a sample pack. You can get, I think there's twice this amount or maybe even more. Um, then this is the uh, super fine dubbing from Semperfly as well. Right? natural so you can see all those natural colors and it's a super fine dubbing um another here right another's multi like an ice dub there's just so many uh semperfly just came out with a semper seal they call it which is a seals fur substitute uh down in the u.s and other places you can't use seals fur it's illegal uh here in canada we can so um but it depends so dubbing again Go buy your recipe. I suggest that you just pick up a couple of packs of just like this for now with the colors you need. Uh, and pick up a hair's mask because that's a very popular one for tons of different, especially river flies. Um, pick up two, three packs of this, uh, again, for what you need, the colors you need for your area. And uh, then once you get into it, start picking up those other packs. Those other packs are awesome. So, all righty. That's dubbing. Like I said, I'll do more detailed stuff on each one of these products in separate little videos and show you actually how to use them. So, all right, um, let's go on to chenilles. Chenilles is another big um, category. Uh, you can get them in naturals, you can get them in, in synthetics, you can get them in, in sparkle, you can get them in rent, all kinds of stuff. So here's a just a regular green chenille. Great for doing like carry bodies and stuff like that. Worm chenille, again, great for doing like a red carry or doing a, uh, like a San Juan worm or something. Um, and then you can move on. And there's hundreds of different colors, different sizes, different uh, shapes to this, uh, all kinds. So um, again, go buy your recipe, but um, that's what a chenille looks like. This is what a sparkle chenille. Uh, this one is a cactus chenille. Ooh, there we go. See how it's spiky and, and stuff? And this is synthetic. Um, most of this stuff is synthetic. Some of it's, uh, you know, is, is natural. If you can find some of the older stuff, especially. But uh, like this is a crystal flash peacock, right? Crystal flash cactus, they call it from Canadian llama. But it's a, it's a, um, basically, it's a sparkle chenille. There's, and then there's so many again out there. Pick the colors and sizes that you need for your area. Just because it works in the Pacific Northwest doesn't mean it's going to work in the in the Northeast of the US, right? So colors do matter in, in an area. So pick the colors you need for your area. Talk to the guys in the fly shop. Join a fly club. There's all kinds of fly tying clubs out there. Join one of the clubs. They're usually free. I think it's usually guys just getting around and BSing and you know telling uh, fishing stories and tying flies and helping uh, the newbies out. So join a tying club it's it's believe me it helps so that's chenilles again i'll go in more into chenilles when i get to that point um probably my i think it's one of the number one products out there that you need to have in your in your uh, arsenal especially as a well lake and river fisherman is marabou okay this happens to be hens which i think is probably one of the best marabous out there right now um there's lots of Maribou's, lots of different brands out there. Don't buy this stuff at Michael's or Joann's. I think don't buy the, the stuff in the, in the, uh, you know, that they're using for boas and all that. It's different. This they pick up the stuff at, uh, at the tying shops. Um, unless you find a really good quality. Once you know what the quality is like, then if you find a good one somewhere, great. But you see how all that movement, like, see how that moves? That's what you want in, in Maribou, right? So, um. And there's different types of marabou too, right? Turkey and, and chicken and all kinds of stuff. So, but uh, uh, yeah, marabou. I would pick that up in uh, uh, again in olive. I'd pick it up in red. I'd pick it up in black. Um, 
depends if, again on the colors in your area white could be really good um, tans could be really good it's again pick up what you need for your area pick up what you need by the recipe but great stuff one of my favorite materials um, <clears throat> let's get into some more naturals here guinea fowl right this is a huge feather normally they're not this big this is like massive I would use this for like a salmon fly or a steelhead fly or a tropical fly or something that's huge I wouldn't ever use anything that big for trout but um, this is a, a bulk pack like a, a large size um, but these are uh, I would make sure you have this in, in in green and in the natural color which is kind of black and white like this this isn't guinea this is teal but that color in this material okay and then this is teal flank Again, uh, another natural material. You can get these in myriad of different dyed colors. I would go with whoop, the natural, this one here, the natural black and white bard, right? And I would go with probably an olive green one. Those are the two that I use the most. But again, keep saying it, colors for your area, okay? But teal flank, important to have in my opinion. Great for wings, great for throats, great for uh, collars. Um, deer hair again talk to your fly shop they'll tell you which ones to get whether it's uh, a body or if it's underbelly or whatever depending what you're what you're tying depending what fly you're tying um, but deer hair you can get it in natural like this you can get it in dyed green dyed orange dyed red all kinds of stuff depends what you're tying this is probably the most popular this color just a straight natural um, the other one that I would suggest you get is uh, uh, elk, uh, for elk hair caddis and so on. Uh, moose mane, if you're going to be doing some uh, uh, some more traditional wet style flies and where you want that that segmentation, you actually take a, one hair of the moose mane and you wrap it around the, the hook. It gives you a segmented look. Um, so those are the three, but deer hair, deer hair, deer hair. It's a very important one. Deer hair is more of a dry fly um, material. And uh, the reason behind that is, is deer hair is hollow. And so if it's hollow, it floats, it gathers air and it'll float, right? So um, deer hair it really helps keeping a, a dry flies afloat. So just remember that. Not saying that I don't use it for my sinking flies too. They, one of my favorite flies is the Gonfus dragonfly and it's all deer hair, spun deer hair and then cut to shape. Um, and it's a, for, for getting down deep, you use it on a, on a fast sinking line, but uh, um, it, something for later. If you're a beginner fly fisherman, you wouldn't understand this either. Uh, you'd get you'll learn that later but uh, as a more advanced guy you know what I'm talking about um, the, the, they work really well so um, flashes there's all kinds of different flashes you can pick up tons of different styles um, this these are a crinkle flash or a crystal flash whatever you want to call it um, I store them in these little 5 8 plastic tubes I picked up at Home Depot Instead of in the in the Ziploc bags, I always find them a pain. Even cutting the corners out, I just don't like them. So I just get them in these little. They all come with on on a Z tie wrap like this, mm -hmm, wrong way. So and I just picked up these and cut them to length. And then I just when I'm done with it, I use it. When I'm done with it, I just shove it back in, and that's it. It just keeps it all nice and tidy and neat. And I got them in bags by color range, right? So, um, so my greens will be together, my reds will be together, my blacks will be together, my silvers will be together, that kind of stuff. So, but again, I would recommend if you're going to get some, get red, silver, and gold. Those are the three I would start with. Go nuts after. Same with uh, Flashaboo, like this. This is a Flashaboo. This is a six nine nine six is the, the the number up here. That's the color code. So this is probably my number one color out there. Is the six nine nine six? This red. Um, I would also pick it up again, silver, um, in maybe in gold or copper, and even in black, depending what you are tying. So, again, same thing, color. Um, after that, we start getting into some of the expensive stuff. Now, this stuff, after hook, like hooks are probably the most, nah, not the most expensive, but this is probably going to be the the most expensive part of your fly tying arsenal and that's hackle hackle can be crazily expensive i mean if you find decent hackle for a decent price 
um, fine, but uh, it's um, it can be something that will uh, cost you quite a bit of money. So, so let's start off with the dry fly stuff. So your dry fly hackle is going to be a bit spikier. It's going to be usually a little longer, longer fibers. Uh, it's going to be usually smaller. And it's and what I mean by spike here is when I, let's see if I pull out, if I do this and go backwards, you see how they spike out and stay out like that? And they're not sticking together. Dry fly. That's an easy way. It's not always, but it's an easy way to sh see dry fly. Um, these can get, like I said, crazy expensive. As an example, here's a, a full cape. This is a Coachman Brown that I just paid 150 bucks for, right? Now, that being said, I'll probably get a thousand flies out of this, if not more. Each feather here, I can get three, four flies out of, depending on the size of fly. So, um, and you can get them in so many different colors, right? Blacks and reds and coachmen and, and badger and, 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 and ginger and white and just, it's never ending. So, again, pick the colors you need for your area. If you ha If you don't know, I would make sure you got a grizzly, white black. I would make sure you've got some sort of a ginger, coachman, something like that. You know, coachman's a little darker than the ginger, but a coachman or a ginger, or both, and a black. Okay? Make sure, whoop, wrong way, that way. Make sure you got those black, a ginger, coachman, or, and a, uh, um, uh, a grizzly. Now, if I had to pick, I'd pick these two. If I had only could only afford two at the time, I'd pick a gin, uh, uh, a uh, grizzly, and I'd pick an all black. Okay. If you got the extra money, pick up a ginger. If you got the extra money, pick up a coachman. If you got the extra money, pick up a white. Uh, pick up a pick up a white. Right. So it all depends on what you're tying, what you're needing. So that's dry. Going in, and, and, the, and just so you know, uh, the, the grizzly can get dyed in orange, in purple, in green, in uh, every color you can think of, it, you can find it dyed in, right? So, um, in red. So, that's the uh, that's the uh, the grizzly hackle, they call it. So, okay. I'm going to put these away. Sorry for my reaching around, but otherwise it's become such a mess here. Um, <clears throat> another one to have, again, I wouldn't recommend this one as a beginner, but just so you know, because you'll see a lot of guys talking about it, um, this is a jungle cock cape. Okay, these are crazy expensive. This one's well, well, well used. There's only big ones left. Um, all the small ones from the bottom here, uh, there's some hanging off the bottom, but this is a well used cape. Um, but again, you'll, you, they use these for eyes and stuff on the side of flies. Um, and then you can use these feathers up top here for hackle, for wet hackle. And uh, they're, 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 it's great, but they're like, for this small little, for this, which is not much bigger than my hand. No, it's actually smaller than my hand. It's about 150 bucks. So they're not cheap. So I wouldn't recommend this one for a beginner, but as you get better, great. Um, wet fly. So I'll go through some of the wet fly hackle here, but uh, just so you can see, this is from the... Uh, from the jungle cock cape. This is one of those back feathers. And you'll see when I grab this, it'll look a lot wetter, webbier, oilier when I stroke. You see how that sticks together when it goes out? Oops. See that? How that kind of sticks together? It doesn't It doesn't spike out as, as nicely and stay separated. They're in little piles. That's a wet, that's an easy, not always, but an easy way to tell if it's a wet, okay? So, <clears throat> Some of the wet hen hackles. There's one there, right? Go to this package, open this up, bunch of here. So there's all kinds of different ones, but there's like like that, right? It's got the nice spikies out, out the top here, and then it's got more of the, the, the wet style again, like I showed you earlier, down in the bottom. Uh, you can get them in greens, you can get them in cans, you can get them in, uh, this one here is, is kind of a, 
it's 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 spiky but it's not like see this one is a more of a dry again see how it spikes out oops see how it spikes out there and, and stays out and it doesn't stick together right so that but it's a bigger it's much bigger than the other ones I was showing you right so this is is going to be used for different flies again bigger flies um, So all kinds of different ones you can get. All oh, different colors. This is an India cake, right? From H and H. So that's going to, again more on the wet on the dry side because it's going to be spikier. It's not going to be as, as webby and wet if you want to call it. I know it sounds weird, but it's wet is a is a really weird description, but uh, it it's oily. Here's another. Right, but again, if I take one of these feathers off, just show you real quickly, I'll be doing more on this as well. But you see how it kind of sticks together, right? So, okay. So that, <clears throat> if you're gonna get that again, buy for the color for your area. But again, if you don't know what colors, I would go with a green, I would go with a black, and I would go with some sort of a gingery, um, gingery kind of color like that's not that's a, a dry again but a, a gingery or, or 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 coachman or brown or something like that um those are the three i would go with just as generic but uh again this is something that you need to find out what works in the area that you're fishing and for the species you're fishing for right um rainbow trout brown trout brook trout they all like different stuff right so you just got to kind of no. Now, a lot of the stuff is obviously can cross over from one to the other, but just find out what they what they like in your area. Um, <clears throat> another one that I've I haven't usually recommended to beginners, but lately I've, been, I've just been using so much of it. And I know so many guys using so much of it that I think it should be added to the beginners repertoire. And that's called the canard CDC. This stuff is amazing. It just holds the light. It holds the sheen. It uh, slicks back when it's when it gets goes underwater. But it's it's also it's a it's used in a lot of dry flies, like a ton of dry flies. I've been using it as wings and stuff and wet flies, just because I'm using a sinking line anyway, so it's going to pull it down. But I like the just I like how it slicks back and I like how it shines under the water and stuff. But this is like the preening feather from ducks. It's full of lots of oils and stuff. That's why it floats. Okay. Um, other things that I would highly recommend you get as a beginner, obviously you'll net, um, if you're going to be tying anything, uh, heavy, you want to have some beads. So silver, a uh, black, sorry, silver, copper, or gold are the three I would probably recommend the most. Uh, no, nope, this way. Hold on, I'm just going to readjust my camera. So a copper, a gold, sorry, a black, whether it's shiny black or flat black. I actually like the flat black better myself. The There's some flat blacks in there. You see them? There. Um, and then silver. Those are the three I would recommend. Size depends on what size of fly you're tying. So check your recipe um, and pick the right ones up. And then if you're going to be tying any kind of like vampire leeches or anything colorful that you want a hot spot, pick up orange and pick up green. Those are the two big colors I would pick up if you're going to want some hot spots. Those two. I mean reds work, pinks work, but those are the two I would pick up if I was using wanting hot spots. Uh, a couple other things you'll you'll need is uh, a tinsel of some sort. Um, so I really like the hollow tinsel. This is called hollow tinsel. You can get it in different sizes. I think this is like a medium. Yep. So you can get it in a small, medium, large. Uh, Zemperfly has it by their size, 132, hollow. I'd pick it up in silver and I'd pick it up in gold to start. Um, wire, uh, several different, again, um, but silver, you know, where are we? Silver, uh, gold, or copper. Um, is or definitely uh, definite ones I would pick up and red those are the three big big colors okay and I would usually pick them up in small and medium but again it depends what you're tying uh, chronomids and stuff you want small leeches I usually use medium like for the for ribs and for carries and that kind of stuff so 
that's wire. And then you can get on to stuff like this, which is your uh, uh, straggle strings, right? So you're gonna have all kinds of different sizes and there's, you see how much longer that one is, the, the orange than the uh, than these here, right? So it depends on what you're tying. But these straggles are, uh, are really good. You can get them in a myriad of colors. So I like the black and I like the green to start with. Those are the ones I would start with. Um, these are all from Semperfly. And some of them are called micro straggles, some of them are called micro uh, uh, straggle strings, some of them are called ice straggle. It all depends on the length. So just when you're on the websites or at the stores, just look at that. Um, the other thing is stuff like this. These, uh, these this one's called uh, dirty bug yarn. So it's just a like a, a chenille basically on a uh, on a roll. And when you when you fuzz this out, it gets nice and fuzzy, right? So. Um, there's another one, the dry fly poly yarn, they call it. It's another one from Semperfly. But uh, yeah, it's a really good material as well. So uh, and there's all kinds of, like, I mean, you can get them really, like, this is called a quick dub. You can't get this one anymore, but you see what I mean by, like, how different lengths. Now, that being said, since you can't get stuff like this readily anymore, you can at certain places, but they're, they're getting them harder and harder to find. Like, this, this is the quick dub. You can't get this anymore unless you find stores that still have it, but they don't make it anymore. So what I what do I do? I pay attention at at Hobby Lobby and at Michaels and Joann's and stuff like that. And hey, looky, looky, looky. It's a quick dub. It's a big ball of quick dub. Basically, it's what it is. It's not, but it basically is. Keep your eyes open, guys. Dollar stores, Walmarts, everywhere. Everywhere I go, I keep my eyes open for materials I can use. Um, not in substitute, but in addition to, um, in addition to uh, 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 what I can get at, at, at fly shops, right? It's just so much of that stuff you can pick up at regular, regular uh, um, stores. You don't have to go to fly shops. In some occasions, a lot of this stuff, it's packaged for us, it's packaged smaller, so we don't have to buy, you know, 200 yards of the damn stuff, right? I mean, who's, I'm never gonna use that in my lifetime. Um, so, um, but there's there's all kinds of stuff, just pay attention. Um, I'm just gonna switch over to the other camera view so I can look at you guys. Um, yeah, just keep an eye open for stuff, um, especially as a beginner. I mean, the guys that have been doing it for many years, we're always looking for stuff, I mean, Everything that I look at is through the lens of a fly tire. Pretty well everything. I, mean, I go to Value Village or whatever, or a, or a, a, a garage sale, and I'm always, oh, no, I could wick it down, and that won't work. Oh, yeah, that might work, right? So, um, yeah, just keep an eye on, on stuff like that. Uh, the other one I forgot to mention that is an absolute must, in my opinion, for beginners. I don't think I mentioned it in this one, since it's take two, I think I mentioned in the first one, is pheasant tails. You need to have some pheasant tails, natural. Don't you don't need other colors, just natural. Uh, pick up a, one or two pheasant tails, pheasant tail nymphs, uh, half backs, full backs, all that. Use pheasant. So make sure you've got some pheasant tails as well. Um, you can also pick up stuff like like this. This is actually a locally harvested uh, pheasant, female hen, but uh, um, really good for those wet flies again, right? Those those feathers in the back. Really good for wet flies, even the chest feathers here for different colored wet fly. And then on the top of the head, um, just smaller feathers for smaller flies. So so you can keep an eye out for that kind of stuff too. But uh, like I said, just, just play. And um, lastly, head cements. Pick up whatever you like. Um, but... I prefer, like, I mean, you can get head cement, head, whoops, sorry, head cements, but I prefer, and most guys nowadays do, Sally Hansen's. You can pick this up at any Shoppers Drug Mart, London Drugs, uh, Rexall, whatever, right? So, um, and then uh, the other one I, I do use a lot of is Golf. Now, this is a, happens to be a green. I just picked that one. But Golf is a resin, um, and then you need a UV light to dry it, to cure it. But I use a lot of resins myself. Uh, but do you need it as a beginner? Probably not. Um, if you're going to do coronamids and stuff, as an example, um, it's going to be hard to see this one, but this one I just did a while ago. It's got three three coats of uh, Sally Hansen's on it, so you don't need to to do uh, to do uh, um, UV resin if you don't want. So, alrighty, so stay tuned. Um, in the next 
couple months here, I'm going to be doing, you know, maybe one video a week or one every two weeks of breaking each of these categories down. So I'll, I'll talk about dubbing and I'll show you guys actually different styles, how to do a dubbing loop, how to do a split thread technique, uh, uh, how to manipulate dubbing uh, so it, it comes out, pulls out into a leech or, oh, no, don't want to pull it out. You want to leave it tighter and spiky. Uh, so I'm going to show you a bunch of different techniques with each thing. So dry fly, hackle, wet fly, hackle, dubbing, uh, uh, how to use uh, some of the other feathers for, for throats and collars and all that kind of stuff. So I'll, uh, I'll be doing that in individual little four, five, six minute videos. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, if you're looking for any of that stuff for the beginner, it's going to be under a fly tying for beginners tab on, in my page. So you can just go into my page and look for the fly tying for beginners. And all this, these beginner videos will be there. Mind you, most of my tying videos, 70%, are geared towards the beginner. But um, this is going to be really geared towards guys that are just starting. Guys that don't have the materials yet. Guys that don't have the, the, uh, um, uh, the tools yet. Um, and, and, and people that, that just need that, that helping hand. Because sometimes you don't feel like when you go into a store that uh, that uh, because you don't know what you're doing, you end up coming out of there with a thousand dollar bill. Well, in my opinion, you shouldn't. Right. Uh, I think you should come out of there with what you need for starting. You'll buy more. If if you start tying and you start liking it. Yeah, you, you, you don't do it because you think you're going to save money on buying flies because you're not. <laughs> but you get to tie what you like and you get to tie you get to play, you get to do, you get to be artistic. And the biggest thing is you get to tie what you see. So if you see something hatching at a lake or at a river, you can actually ha have your stuff with you and boom, tie something out that looks like it, right? And that's the nice thing. You can match the hatch, if you want to call it that, or make something crazy that just pisses the fish off. So, alrighty, so stay tuned for that. And uh, if you like that, thumbs up. If you subscribe, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so and uh, in the next little while here I've got a couple more giveaways I've got another Osprey uh, fly box book to give away and I've got an airflow Euro nymph line to give away and a few other things so alrighty so stay tuned for the video that asks you guys to make comments and have a chance to win thanks guys tie lines everyone